I'm going to tell you a strange story. One time I was, I was, I had been through a very hard time for a very long time. And you know, when you go through something for too long, you can almost become ill. You know, too much for too long. And it had been some years, and I was almost at that place. And it was one of the first times I'd ever seen Edgar. He was a stranger to me, and he had this little service out in Sandwich, Illinois. And at the end of the service, he said, well, put your hand in the air. He said, my hand is getting hot. Put your hand in the air and ask the Lord for whatever you need, and he will do it. He said it real positively. And I remember thinking, I need everything. I don't even know what I need. I need so many things. And I remember thinking, but I really need healing on the inside. I was so broken up on the inside. I was so hurting. And so I did what he said. I put my hand in the air. I said, Lord, I'd like you to heal me on the inside. And right away, nothing nothing happened much yet. But that night, I was staying over at the, at the pastor and his wife. It was their home, and I was staying over. And when I woke up the next day, I began to sob. I sobbed for several hours. And what was happening was God was healing me on the inside. He was releasing all the, all the hurts. Now, when people cry for a couple hours, they don't look too good. Okay. Their face gets all puffy. I mean, I don't look too good. And the pastor knocks on the door and he says, there's a brother out here that has a word for you. I'm thinking, well, he ain't going to see me looking like this. I don't care what word he's got. <laughs> so I said, well, let me wash my face, and I'll, I'll come down in a minute. So I kind of did the best I could, and I went downstairs. This guy did not know me at all. We, he'd, like, seen me, you know, once maybe. He had been sitting in his car worshiping to some music, and the Lord kept saying my name, Holly, Holly, Holly. So he figured, well, I must have a word for her. And so when the pastor came and got me, this brother, we sat down in these two chairs. I'll never forget this. I will never forget this. Remember now, I was so hurting, so broken on the inside, so hurting. The power of God came so strong, I couldn't hear what the guy was saying. I don't know to this day what the guy said. The presence of the Lord was so strong. I was, it was chairs like this, and I was holding on to the, I was holding on to this to keep from falling off. And I had my eyes shut, and I remember thinking, i got to try to hear what he's saying. He's telling me something from God, and I'm so, I was so far gone, I couldn't get it. So I remember I tried to get my eye open, and, and this brother, I'll never forget this, he said, look at me, Holly, look at me. And I opened my eyes, and I looked at him. This is going to sound funny, but he went just like this. <laughs> he made this like really funny kind of face. When he did, this is what I saw. I looked at him and saw a well of joy. This man had a well of joy. And I didn't ask permission. I, I, I grabbed that guy's hand and stuck it on my head and pulled. <laughs> I did. And that well of joy came into me. I got a well of joy that way, that day. Now, two years prior to this, Brother Dave Duell had come to town. And I was in, remember, this was years of trial. So I saw Dave Duell in the middle of the whole mess. And when I went forward for prayer, I remember as I walked up saying, I hope he doesn't ask me what I want because everything is a mess. Every area of my life was a disaster. I mean, home, work, everything was a disaster. So I walked forward thinking, don't even ask. <laughs> now I'll never forget this. Dear brother came up and looked me in the eyes and he said, you haven't laughed much lately. Now remember, this is two years prior to my getting a well of joy. He said, you haven't laughed much lately, but he said, you haven't had much reason to. He said, but I'm telling you, the day is coming when you're going to lay in bed and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. Well, nothing happened for two years, but when I got that well of joy, for months, I laid in bed and laughed and laughed and laughed and laughed. And the Lord was pouring stuff into me. I couldn't even tell anybody about it. I, so I thought they would think I was nuts. But you know... I went through so many years of trials that the Lord was healing me. Did it, Remember, Edgar said, put your hand in the air, ask for what you need, and God will give it to you. See? And that's what God did. He gave me this well of joy. And one thing, I'm telling you all this to say, the one thing I learned from the well of joy is, once you begin to operate in God's joy, you can do that, and it's unrelated to your outward circumstance. Amen.
because it's the joy of the Lord. It's something from heaven that gives us a joy whether things are going our way or not. Because, you know, during this life, there will be days when everything's going your way and there will be days when nothing is. <laughs> that's just how it is. It doesn't sound very faithy, but that's the truth. You know, we can be faith and say, you know, and I have a lot of faith, and say, oh, you know, it's all, all is well. Hallelujah. But really, <laughs> no, <laughs> some things aren't so well. <laughs> but what I discovered is that there's a choice that we can make how we will walk out our days.